Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in. This is a uh, video about running a client's boat up to Cairns from Brisbane. It's a 35 Caribbean and this will be its seventh season it's done up in Cairns for the heavy tackle marlin fishing. The client's an old friend of mine and he very kindly said I could take my boys. A couple of years ago the whole family came, I had my wife and daughter with us as well but we couldn't make that work this year and probably just as well when you look at the conditions we left in. Yeah, so we were doing the trip over at about 10 days. Um, the delivery part's probably only about five days normally. But the owner very kindly said, why don't we do a bit of fishing at the other end in Cairns? So of course we grabbed that opportunity. So that meant leaving in a pretty poor forecast for the actual run up the coast so that we could catch the glamour weather at, that was forecast out of Cairns in about four or five days. Today was running from Brisbane up over the Wide Bay Bar as you saw before, up the Great Sandy Straits behind Fraser Island and then into Bundaberg here where we refuelled and spent the night. Into Bundaberg, fueled up, just giving her a hose off. And then we went up and had dinner at the little local restaurant within the marina. Oh, he got it. So it was an early start, quick breakfast, I think it was about 4 a.m. and another long day ahead of us in pretty ordinary conditions. So because we were trying to make the trip as short as possible to give us more time at the other end, I was doing longer days than I would normally do. Today was Bundaberg right through to Percy Islands, which are just south of Mackay. So it's about a 220 nautical mile run. I cruise at about 20, 21 knots. Um, so, you know, sort of 10, 11 hour days of travel. The first stop along the way was into Roslyn Bay here, which is the great little marina uh, just next to Yapoon, central Queensland. Quick fuel up there with Max, who's been fueling me up, and my father's boat for years and years as we go up and down the coast. He also runs the Freedom Fast Cats there, you see, backing in. So like a Formula One pit stop, we were out of there within about half an hour and on our way to Percy Islands. This stretch of the coast is beautiful, probably one of my favourite parts along the coast because you're right in next to it, some beautiful headlands and anchorages in there. Pearl Bay, Island Head Creek, name a few, that's Island Head Creek back in there. Finally, into some calm water behind the Percy Islands. This is Middle Percy, and the beach has the uh, renowned A-frame, which is full of passing yachts, plaques, and memorabilia. Why am I wrong? <laughs> yeah, so it was a quick, quick stop there. It was almost sunset, so we just rowed the tender in, save getting the outboard out. Show the boys there grandfather and great-grandfather's old plaques that are in there. This is one of our earliest plaques there, the South Pacific 2. And that's our skidgy one from a few years ago when my wife and daughter joined us. That's a plaque to Andy Martin who was the original guy that lived on the island. I actually was stuck here in a big blow back in about 1980 nine I think it was and uh, I actually got up to meet Andy Martin went up and had a cup of tea with him in his homestead he's an amazing man then it was back out to the boat 
boys cooked some steaks and we netted a few garfish in the lights for bait down the track. And he took what we needed. And then another early start as we made our way through to the Whit Sundays for our next fuel stop. Yeah, so today's run was about 230 nautical miles. I was going to go right through to Townsville for the night. First, we come into the beautiful Whitsunday Islands, get a bit of shelter from this southeaster, and make our way to Hamilton Island Marina, where I was going to fuel up. again. It's Gloucester Island, we're passing there. Beautiful scenery. This is Cape Cleveland as you approach Townsville. Coming into the Breakwater Marina. Alright, we're in Townsville. I'm guessing about 750 litres. It's pretty close. I've been driving this boat a long time. We're Pretty good at guessing the fuel usage. So we went and had a nice dinner in town. Good work, boy. Yeah, Poor old Jack had to do some uni work. And then up at first light to make our way for the last leg, which will take us through to Cairns. It's a relatively short run today, 160 nautical miles. And the weather was starting to uh, back off as the forecast had predicted. So we we're getting a bit excited knowing that the following day we'll be heading out to the reef to do some fishing. Just north of Townsville is Rattlesnake Island there. That's used by the uh, military for live firing practice. Luckily none was happening. And this is the Palm Island group. Very pretty, a lot of islands through there. Great Palm Island and Orpheus Island. Beautiful places. See the weather really is backing off now, so that's Fitzroy Island there on our starboard and Cape Grafton to port there, which is just before Cairns. So finally into Cairns, four days running. Yep, final fuel. We've arrived in Cairns, I'm guessing about 800. So it was time to pull out all the heavy tackle, get ready for the next day. Fix an outrigger line that had broken. <laughs> Boat is delivered. And of course, a little celebration and a nice dinner at Salt House Restaurant. So after topping up the water, and making some final preparations, it was time to get going. The plan was just to uh, spend our time around Opal Reef and fishing the Linden Bank. Uh, we're a bit early this time of year for the Linden Bank to be working with the uh, bigger marlin, but given I was paying the diesel for this part, I wasn't gonna go too far. <laughs> So 
So we stopped along the way, had a swim at one of the reefs. And then we started trolling a couple of halcos to see if we could get ourselves some marlin bait, like oh, this yeah, beautiful scaly mackerel, one of the prize baits for marlin yeah. fishing. Jack was keen to do some popper fishing on some schools of fusiliers looking for a big GT. We had no luck there. So back to trolling. The boys did well. Another scaly comes aboard. Tuna. And then it was time to head out to the Linden Bank. Winding down, now straighten back, that's Quick it. Quick lesson on using 130 pound tackle Ready in the for chair. That? <laughs> the boys have actually caught a few marlin on heavy tackle before, but it's been a few years, so it's good to give them another update and make them realise how hard these things pull on that tackle. So early in the day we caught that little spotty mackerel. It was just legal and perfect for dinner. And then the boys were just marvelling at all the, I think they're blue spot trevally that were in our lights in the evening. It's an incredible place, the Great Barrier Reef. Pristine and healthy as ever. That's it, good. <laughs> So the next day, a bit more bait fishing, another swim and back out to the marlin fishing. So that boat was the only other game boat on the Linden Bank while we were out there that day. It was skippered by Darren Hayden, who used to be my brother Bo Jennings' captain. Very respected captain out there. He ended up catching a fish that day actually, we saw in the distance. Long tail tuna, one of our favourite yeah. for sashimi. Oh, a big lump of a thing. And then the boys okay. did a bit of catch and release. The <laughs> Trevally. Oh, you big spangled emperor, bring him in. Yeah. yeah. We actually ended up releasing that as well. We had enough good fish on board. <laughs> the sand's on a nice red bass here, great sport, but don't eat them, they're high risk cigateria. <laughs> oh, anyway. Good lad, great gaff. <laughs> Fantastic father son time. You try filming and, yeah. and gaffing at this. That looks pretty good spot. Yeah, Have a snorkel. So the Cairns heavy tackle fishery has traditionally been a bait 
fishing area, not lures, the big blacks. They love these skipping baits and small swimming baits. I mean, a few years ago, we actually got a uh, runner-up champion angler fishing with lures up here, but if you got the choice, go bait. Blues can't eat baits, but blacks can eat lures as well. A few weekend guys out of cans when the weather's like that. You can see all my tracks there on the Linden Bank. It's a well-worn path for this boat. Last five minutes. All zeros today. Yeah, it really was too early in the season for us to be fishing there, but look, the boys had an absolute ball with all the bait fishing and even going through the motions of some heavy tackle fishing is exciting. And no evenings complete on the reef without a, trying to catch and release a big shark. So sadly, with perfect weather, our sort of time had come to an end. So this was our last morning. I thought we'd do a bit more bait fishing on the way back into Cairns. Sam picked up a nice trout on the troll. And we found a nice school of small long tails. So we kept a few more of those in for the freezer for the coming marlin trip. Spanish mackerel as well. Yeah, just pull him in, beauty. They were kept for eating, of course. Yoo! Up there in the heat, you got to process them pretty quickly. Get them in the cold. On the way into Cairns, I said to the boys, let's have one more snorkel. But when we got there, there was lots of little whalers swimming around. They were slightly concerned about it, but I said, look, roll the camera. I'll show you how they take off as soon as I jump in the water. Well, sometimes it's good to laugh at yourself, so enjoy this bit of footage. Here you go. You need a little bit looser on, bro. Okay. Do that on the other side as well. So look, to be honest, I had been looking at a shark that was right down on the bottom, and it did look like a bull shark. I'm speechless, I'll have to dive in. You did it on? Yeah, I think I did. did you just come over? Yeah, fully. <laughs> well, that was ridiculous. <laughs> Swum with those things all my life, and I've never had one charge out of me. So I'm not swimming. <laughs> Bugger it. Yeah, so it's not uncommon for bull sharks to do that. They'll charge at you to show it's their territory. Um, they can bite, and that one certainly did hit my fins. Anyway, after that bit of excitement, we uh, continued trolling towards Cairns. And would you believe it? Not far from the leads, Jack hooks a monster Spanish mackerel. Her teeth. Well, thanks for watching. That wraps this video up as we run into cans. I've got a couple more to upload before the end of the year, so subscribe, click the notification bell, and we'll see you then. Cheers.